This week on The Review, Al Jazeera's exclusive interview with Guantanamo's youngest detainee. The Woman of Crucia, a story of resilience in the wake of the Kosovo War. Our Africa correspondents on Twitter and the news you were following this week. Hello and welcome to The Review, the show that goes behind the scenes here at Al Jazeera but also lets you do the talking. The feature trending all week has been Al Jazeera's exclusive interview with Omar Khadr, the youngest person ever to be imprisoned in the U.S. military detention camp at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. He was 15 years old at the time. Now 28, Khadr was released on bail in May after 13 years of confinement. He was deemed a terrorist and convicted of murder, a charge he's appealing. Al Jazeera's Witness series gained unprecedented access to Khadr during his first days of freedom and presents his first full-length interview in the documentary Guantanamo's Child. We asked you to write in questions for the film's director and we'll be talking to him later on. But first, a look back at the news that had you clicking and sharing. The combination of flood and fire in the capital Accra has led to the deaths of many. An explosion and fire at a petrol station late on Wednesday night killed scores of people. Saudi state media is reporting that its army has stopped a major attack by Yemeni rebels on its territory. It's said to have been carried out in Saudi Arabia's southwestern Jizan province by Houthi fighters and Yemeni Republican guards loyal to former President Ali Abdullah Saleh. Fifteen rescue operations have been carried out in the Mediterranean Sea in the last 24 hours. Around 3,400 migrants have been saved after making the dangerous journey to enter Europe. Thousands of AK Party supporters gathered outside the party headquarters to celebrate yet another election victory. But this time, despite the jubilation of the crowd, there was a sense of disappointment. Sunday's elections appear to have delivered a major upset. For the first time since coming to power 13 years ago, the AK Party failed to get enough votes to rule on their own. Barack Obama has admitted that the U.S. has no complete strategy on Iraq. The U.S. president made the comments after meeting uh, with Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi on the sidelines of the G7 summit in Germany. The news that Libya's elected parliament has rejected a United Nations draft proposal to form a unity government is a blow to hopes of peace. At Seoul Medical Center, the common cold is being taken more seriously than ever. Anyone with even mild symptoms, a cough, a fever, is brought here for initial screening, kept well away from patients in the main building. Eight patients with MERS currently being treated in this hospital. They've been all brought here from other hospitals already with the disease, so the risk of infection elsewhere within this facility is very minimal. Al Jazeera's Africa correspondent, Heru Mutasa, had been reporting on the unrest in Burundi for weeks. She just finished up her current deployment there and tweeted out this photo before leaving with her crew. Many followers responded, and here's what some of them had to say. Hope for BDI tweeted, Thank you for being our eyes and voice while our government was shooting at us. The world would have otherwise believed that Burundi is in peace. Aloga Mugisha said, Thank you for your not easy coverage, especially when you were mistaken by police for being a local journalist. Munga wrote, loved your Burundi coverage, courageous, I have to say, will miss you. Heru sent in a reply of her own to all of you via Review's video portal. Hi guys, on behalf of um, the Al Jazeera team, myself, Shadley, Dorian, JP, Bellamine, Cyrus and Patrick, Thank you very much for all your messages on social media, especially your tweets. You have no idea how um, sometimes when you're telling us about something happening down the road and we'd rush there, it really helped us a lot. And just sometimes after a long, hard day, dodging uh, tear gas and uh, bullets from the police, uh, you get someone just saying, thank you guys for the story you did. Uh, it helped us understand more about Burundi. That really helps. And to be honest, sometimes it just made us get up in the morning and go back out there and, and try and tell the story. Um, we've taken a bit of a break, uh, trying to rest up, catch up with our families, but we will be back in Burundi very soon. It's an important story for me to tell, it's an important story for Al Jazeera to tell, and uh, we've taken a bit of a break, but we'll be back, so don't worry. And thanks again for everything. 
Everyone's had their eyes on Al Jazeera's exclusive interview with Guantanamo's youngest detainee, Canadian Omar Khadr. The filmmakers of Guantanamo's child met with Khadr just days after his release, and now a grown man, he recounts memories of years past of his arrest, detention, and the conditions at the very controversial military prison. Here's a clip. Today may be the day that Omar Khadr walks out of an Alberta jail. Cotter, game on. We have breaking news from Edmonton where a judge has ordered Omar Khadr released on bail. This is it, this is it, here he comes. Here we go. I'd like uh, to thank the Canadian public for uh, trusting me and uh, giving me a chance. We spoke with the film's director, Patrick Reed, over Skype, and we asked him some of the questions that you guys sent in. Well, the main person who really got access was the co-director, Michelle Shepard. So she's been following this story for 12 years. She had gone down to Guantanamo almost 30 times. She wrote a book about Omar called Guantanamo's Child and really got to know all the kind of secondary characters, people like uh, Omar's lawyer, Dennis Edney, who's a big part in the film. Um, I came in, came on board about two years ago, and at that time I thought it would be one of the fastest films we did because we had permission to do an exclusive interview with Omar in prison. He was in Canadian prison at that time. But the Canadian government uh, went out of their way to kind of put up every possible roadblock and, and drag their heels. So it's been, you know, for me, it's been a, a two-year project. For Michelle, it's been uh, 12 or 13. So when the interview finally happened, uh, it, was, it was great relief. Based all on lies. Well, it's uh, a very good question, I, <laughs> particularly for a documentary filmmaker. Um, see, I, I would say there's a revelation in the film where Omar Khadr comes out and he says, during the firefight, you know, I, I threw a grenade and I don't really remember anything else. And I know, you know, for some people in the audience, they would say, well, that's very self-serving. Um, and, you know, uh, well, what do you expect him to say? Uh, but, you know, we have a number of other characters in the film who are very opposed to Omar. Um, people like a special, special forces guy who was there during the, during the day of the firefight, saw one of his best friends killed. And he also is equally uncertain what happened that day. And there is an element of the fog of war and how memory is faulty. Um, and so, you know, the entire process of the film was just trying to interview a number of people who have first-hand knowledge and first-hand contact with Omar. Um, you know, whether you see him as an absolutely heroic figure or, you know, somebody that deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life, um, why not just see him and hear from him? And then, uh, you know, then if you still want to judge, at least uh, you're, you're doing it from a position of, uh, of some kind of knowledge. One program provoking a lot of viewer commentary this week was Al Jazeera World's The Women of Kusha. The film tells the story of how the women of a Kosovar village rebuilt their lives after its male population was decimated during the war in 1999. Take a look. This is the village of little Krusha in southwest Kosovo, on the banks of the River Dream. In 1999, it was part of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, with a population of around a thousand, Albanian and Serb. According to witnesses like Mart Preik Palai, what happened here in March 1999 not only decimated the male population, 
but was one of the most violent incidents of the 16-month Kosovo War. The conflict left many dead on both sides. What happened in Krusha made women widows and children fatherless. But it also started them on an extraordinary journey of empowerment and rebirth in the wake of their desperate loss. Grate Krushës jam po ashtu grat veçanta, masaj lukte, e veçanarisht Grate Krushës është më të vërtet për të marrë shemur ku do në për vërë. In response to the documentary, Praise the Lord wrote in, hats off to the courage of these women. Monish Suba said on Facebook, saw the doc this afternoon, pains are all the same on this planet. Pranvera Sagajiva Backlund had this to say, thanks for telling the tragedy of my nation. If you'd like to give feedback on the stories we've reviewed today or on anything else that Al Jazeera is reporting, please write in via Twitter or Facebook, or leave us a text or video comment on our webpage. Keep on sharing your thoughts, and maybe next week you could be on the review. Great.